Hello and welcome to FPGA Inside Out Session 3. In the previous session, we explored FIFA buffer. So we will start this session with connecting two FIFA buffers back to back and show how they form a pipeline. Then we'll show how to transform that pipeline into various functional blocks. We'll do it by just placing best spoke valid ready handshaking logic between these two FIFOs. In other words, we can show how to achieve desired functionality of the design by only modifying its flow control logic. The first functional block we'll implement will be inverter block. Inverter block takes data transaction on its input and presents this transaction with inverted value on the output. Then we will implement filter block. Our filter block will pass data transactions with the most significant bit being set to 1, but discard transactions where the most significant bit is set to 0. Then we'll implement replicator block that we started discussing in the previous session. The block that takes data transaction coming to its input and replicates that transaction two times on the output. We'll be simulating our examples using an open source tool called HDL Gadgets. HDL Gadgets is a Python written front end that allows human in the loop interaction with a simulator and enhanced visualization of simulated HDL code. In this session, we'll be working with scenario 5 called Two FIFOs with Custom Logic with Model. Let's start it. We see two FIFOs with the custom logic block between them. We also see here a queue representing transactional level model. It was explained in the previous session how transaction level model is used to prove the functionality of the RTL design. For that reason, during this session, for every functional block we implement, we will follow this tradition of adjusting the model to make it correlate with the RTL code of the design. At the moment, within the custom logic block, we just have data, valid, and ready wires simply connecting corresponding signals of two FIFOs. Let's reset the logic and fill two FIFOs with data. Now let's completely drain FIFOs. We saw that two FIFOs connected back to back behave very much like a one big FIFO. The transaction level model we have here is exactly the same model that we used in the previous session for verifying single FIFO. Because the model is latency agnostic, it will correlate with any correctly functioning RTL design where data follows first in, first out pattern. So this model will be relevant for verifying both FIFO and a pipeline. And by the way, we can think of these two FIFOs here as a serial pipeline with valid ready handshaking. OK, let's try to modify handshaking logic between two FIFOs in order to implement our first example, which is data inverter. So modifying flow control is easy if we think what signals we are being given and what operations we can control with these signals. 
We have signals provided to us by upstream and downstream FIFOs. They are valid signal, data vector signals, ready signal. It's worth mentioning that these signals will come on its own. We don't have to implement anything in our logic that would help bring them up. And using these upstream valid and downstream ready signals, we can trigger POP for requesting new data from upstream FIFO and PUSH for writing data to downstream FIFO. So in order to make the inverter, we can leave valid and ready signals connected so that POP from upstream FIFO and PUSH into downstream FIFO will be happening together. Only change we should do is to invert all the bits on data vector using simple combinational inverters. So here is the circuit diagram of the handshaking logic for data inverter block we just implemented. Let's run this scenario. The monitor here shows that there is no match between output data from our RTL design and the output of the model. Let's change the model. So in the model, we only need to invert data bits that have been pushed into the model queue. Let's run this scenario again. And we can see that everything is clear now. So the next example is the data filter. As we said, our filter block shall only pass those data transactions where the most significant bit is 1. Transactions with the most significant bit equal to 0 must be discarded. To solve this problem, we don't change pattern of POP operation, but we need to modulate PUSH so that only transactions with the most significant bit equal to 1 will be written into the downstream FIFO. In order to modulate PUSH, we have to put circuit breaking logic on the valid line. So we leave ready signals of two FIFOs connected directly and we put a combinational AND gate logic on the valid line. So this is circuit diagram of the handshaking logic for data filter block that we just implemented. Now let's modify the transaction level model. In the push section, we can check if the incoming transaction data has the most significant bit set to 1. If so, we push it into the tail of the model queue, otherwise we don't push. Let's run this scenario.
we see that the model matches the design, so everything looks good. So let's do the replicator block example that we started in our previous session. We want every transaction coming to the block input to be replicated twice on the block output. During the last session, we only changed the model but didn't complete the RTL. So let's first bring the model to that exact state where we left it in the last session. So in the model, we just push incoming data transaction into the queue twice. We program transaction level model just like we program in any other sequential programming language. Now let's try to implement that replicator block in RTL. To solve this problem, we don't change pattern of push operation, but we need to modulate pop so that pop happens with every second push operation. So we can start with implementing a simple one bit counter that will mark every second push operation. Push happens when down valid and down ready are high. We will leave valid signals of two FIFOs directly connected. Therefore, down valid will actually be up valid. So enable signal for our counter would be high when both up valid and down ready are high. And now once we have created the counter, we can use that counter value to modulate the pop from upstream FIFO by placing circuit breaking combinational logic on ready line. So, this is the circuit diagram of the handshaking logic for data replicator block that we just implemented. If we want to visualize counter and enable signal values, custom logic block has a set of debug indicators. Let's assign signal for counter value to the leftmost debug indicator and enable signal to the second from the left debug indicator. Let's run this scenario. We see no errors on the monitor, which means that the model matches the design, so everything looks great. In the next session, we'll continue with more advanced flow control scenarios. In particular, we will see how to do forking of one pipeline into two pipelines and joining two pipelines into one pipeline. That's it for now. You are welcome to install HDL gadgets and experiment with these scenarios yourself. Please don't forget to subscribe, leave your comments below or ask your questions. Thanks for watching.